Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Training Lab. I've got the bench set up today with a master cylinder, a line, and an external slave cylinder for a clutch. We're going to bench bleed this system. If you can take the system intact to the bench and work with it while you replace a master or a slave cylinder, it can make it a lot easier to bleed the system and be able to test the system, get it bled, just install it back in that vehicle, and drive it away. Now, special tools today, very simple a common 3 8 extension. I'm going to use that as a substitute push rod. Here's something that uh, really helps. This is a steering gear puller or a harmonic damper puller. Either one would work. I'm going to attach this to the front of the slave cylinder after I remove the push rod. This will block the piston. I'll be able to feel in the push rod of the master when the system is bled and I can actually bleed through this by removing the screw and putting the push rod in place of the screw and I'll be able to work the piston. The idea here is to put fluid in and then pump air out the top. So let me change the bench up here. We'll put some DOT3 in and we'll get started bench bleeding this external slave cylinder system. Now I've got the camera set up on the bench above the master cylinder so you can see the fluid and the bubbles that are going to occur in here. I'm going to start filling this up with DOT3, but where I'm going to be working is down there on the floor with the slave cylinder my 3 8 extension as a push rod and using the steering gear puller as a means to block the slave cylinder so we'll be able to test our work here. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll put some dot 3 in and get started. Get going. Okay, it's already bubbling. All I'm going to do Using the steering gear puller, I'm just going to go through it. The screw is not in right now. I'm going to put the push rod in there. I'm going to go ahead and push down on it. As I push down, it's pushing air bubbles out. When I relax and let the piston extend, it'll pull fluid back into place of the air bubbles. And the fluid level will, will go down in the reservoir. So we're not venting any fluid out, we're getting rid of air. I think that sound means it's time to put some more fluid in. And we'll continue compressing the piston. You have to look at this system and go, if I was an air bubble, where would I hide? Well, what do I have to do to get you out of there? So if you've got any loops in the line that create a trap, an air trap, if you've ever worked on a Ford Ranger, I think you know what I'm talking about. Those have air traps in them in two places, easily two places. This one pretty much flows straight down. Now the other technique we use and recommend cap on the system. Those air bubbles are kind of sticky when they're inside the line here. And believe it or not, tapping on them like this just kind of loosens them up, gives them the idea that it's time to go up and out. You're going to go out, fluid's coming in. Now if you ever see little particles of white floating around inside the reservoir, don't be alarmed, that's grease. It's a white grease. It's time for more fluid. Remember, all the fluid so far has been going in. Nothing has been taken out in a bleeding process. That's good sound. Could you do this in chassis? Maybe be a lot easier to take it to the bench. A lot of these are just quarter turn pop outs like this one I'm working on. Quarter turn that master cylinder will come out of that bracket. You get the whole system to the bench. It's easier to work with. Might only take one person to do this. And then just snap it back in the firewall there in the bracket. Attach the slave cylinder. Now we're going. No bleed screw, 
no problem. But I will show you a couple tricks here as we go. The nice part about this setup is what we're going to do right now. We're going to be able to test our work on the bench where it's convenient, not in the chassis where it's a little tougher. We'll do that. We'll install it in the chassis when we know it works. Now, how do you know it works? I'll get you a close up of that in just a few minutes when we're done. Just want to turn the screw in so it pushes against that piston. Doesn't really matter where it is, just so it holds it. Now we're going to work the master cylinder push rod. We are almost done. No bubbles coming out. Bubbles breaking the surface, that's good. Get them out. Let's check our work. We're done. Now I'm going to change the camera angle and let's show you the master cylinder push rut. Now I've got the slave cylinder blocked, we bled it, we reverse bled it, push the piston back up. Let's take a look at the final results here. I want to push on the push rod. What we want to watch is how far does the push rod and the piston assembly move before it becomes hard and you'll be able to tell. We are less than an eighth of an inch. This system is bled. It's ready to install in the truck or the car, whatever you're working on. So we just finished bench bleeding this system. It's a lot easier on the bench. You can see the entire system without working around the vehicle. As you push on the push rod, look at the master cylinder piston assembly less than one eighth of an inch travel before the system goes hard. One particular thing I want to point out, the orientation of the line today, the whole time I was working with it, it was oriented so that the air bubble could go up and out. We didn't have any air traps in there where the air bubble would just sit there and go back and forth and not leave the system. Even the master cylinder is tilted from horizontal. I've got the end over here by the reservoir tipped up so an air bubble can get out. If you have any questions about leading a hydraulic system or clutches or flywheels, please call Perfection at 800-258-8312. Press 4. Your call will be routed to Tony, Steve, Bobby, or myself. We'll be glad to take your call and help you out.